I was not in a kitty, so I can't claim to be a witness to vote by, and I did not participate in any decision to vote money to buy votes in a kitty. And I have my doubt as to if votes were to be buy, bought and sold, whether uh, Fayemi, uh, uh, Mr. Fayemi, who no one can claim that Fayemi is a rich man, I know he was struggling to uh, uh, find money to mobilize and to sustain his campaign that he could have had such few tons of money. I guess he's the guy who had access to a kitty treasury, which in this case was the PDP and then the city governor, who was so confident that he has all the resources. He even described himself as rock. If you fall on him, he will break. If he fall on you, he will crush you. Now, the definitions and the particulars of this rock may well be in terms of the amount of Naira that he thought was available. So I am not going to dismiss the allegation either way, just to say that I was not a party to it, and I couldn't have possibly supported it. And I do not think, if you were to go to the specifics, that APC had the kind of resource, the other fire me, to resort to put by. Well, you just heard there, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress. We believe that very soon we most likely will get a response uh, to what he said about vote buying in AKT. But we have with us right now two gentlemen who represent institutions that largely hold the key to stopping vote buying in Nigeria. We have Mr. Oluwale Osaze Uzi, who is the Director of Voter Education and Publicity at INEC. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. We also have with us Mr. Emmanuel Ojuku, who is the Provost, Police School of Public Relations and a former Commissioner of Police in Kogi State. You're welcome, Mr. Ojuku. Good morning. Well, Nigerians have said, and our, former, our guests who just left here have said that Largely, if vote buying is going to be stopped, it rests within the powers of INEC and the security agencies. But what we've seen oftentimes is a trading of blame between these two people. I mean, police will say, INEC did not tell us anything. And INEC will say, well, it is not happening within our perimeter, so there's very, very little that we can do. One of our guests accused INEC, let me first of all start from there, accused INEC of hypocrisy. They say that it was only a matter of time before this vote buying thing got into the mainstream, that it was already happening within political parties, especially the primaries of political parties. And INEC had the powers to, well, they were observers in, within the, that realm, but they never raised it in their observations as a threat that could eventually spread into, you know, mainstream elections. How would you respond to that? Uh, first of all, let me correct an impression that uh, INEC has always blamed the police for this. I don't think that... Uh, I have been the spokesperson for the commission quite a while, and I don't recollect me or chairman or any commissioner stating that the police are responsible for this or they are the only agency that can check this. First of all, yes, the primary responsibility of INEC is to conduct elections. That is its primary statutory and constitutional responsibility, to conduct elections. And conduct of elections, we have to worry about the credibility of the process and the integrity of the process. So, yes, anything that compromises the integrity of the process, but this us as an institution, and we can do all we should do, and we can do all that we can to ensure that that integrity is protected at every twist, at every turn. Having said that, when you talk about the elections, precisely which one of the processes are you to processes are you talking about? The whole process. Because to talk about if the primary is also being a part of the process <clears throat> of the elections, do you or do you think that also comes under your purview as uh, the umpire? Yes, we have a statutory responsibility to monitor the congresses. But that monitoring in that context just basically means going there to show, to see that basic guidelines were followed, the law was followed. If it wasn't followed, or whether it was or it wasn't followed, we put in our report. And that report we uh, publish for anybody who wants it and anybody who wants to challenge the outcome of that process is free to access that report and use it in evidence one way or the other to complement whatever other evidence he or she has. So can we interfere in the process? No. I think it was yesterday night on um, Politics Today, the, the, the National Commissioner in Charge of Publicity, uh, Prince Rebbe, did make the point that, look, we cannot interfere in the domestic affairs of political parties. We can only come in when the law allows us to come in. And in choosing candidates, it's like, uh, the election act says you don't even interfere. Whatever list or whatever name is submitted to you, you accept. The Constitution gives us the mandate to monitor the 
primaries as well as other activities. Regardless of whether or not the process was flawed or compromised. Regardless. It does not give us, and we cannot act, we're a statutory uh, institution, we cannot act outside of our mandate clearly spelled out in the Electoral Act and in the Constitution. So basically it's to conduct elections. So when there's vote buying, whether it's in the primaries of a, of a political party or whether it's in um, a general election or by-election, there is a limit as to what INEC can do. And contrary to what the uh, spokesperson who just left of uh, the SDP, former spokesperson of the SDP said, <laughs> we, there's, there's, um, when you see things happening, we don't have a right to arrest. INEC as an institution does not have a right to arrest. There's nowhere in the Electoral Act, nowhere in any law, in the Constitution, 